with the large number of bushwalks and daywalks in New Zealand, um, I like to have a kit that I can just grab right off my shelf and go out whenever I want to do a day walk. I do have my bushcraft kit. Now that it has a haversack and a belt. Now the belt carries a water bottle, a possibles pouch and a knife. There's two reasons why I don't like to carry that stuff on a day walk. Um, one is comfort. Um, on a day walk I'm going to cover longer distance. You know we've got nice laid out paths and a lot of the bush is steered now. Uh, the bush path they have steps in them uh, for to protect the environment make it last longer and so you can cover a lot more ground quickly that other um, My bushcraft kit is not really made for comfort. It's not as comfortable as a carry bag like this is The other thing is the large knife that's on my bushcraft kit um, Day walks that's public property you're out there in the public eye and among among other people and they see this hooey great knife hanging off your belt and everybody gets nervous. I just don't need the hassle. So what I do is I just carry something like this. It's a lot more comfortable for long distances and it doesn't make anybody freak. Uh, what it actually is, is a Swedish uh, or a Swiss Army gas mask bag. Um, I got a 10 to $15 in Army surplus store. It's not really very waterproof, but that doesn't really bother me too much. Um, this strap here, I made one modification to it. It was sewn at both sides, so it was sewn fast. What I did is, where the buckle was, it was sewn fast up there. I just cut the thread and uh, pulled the strap out so that I could run this extra pouch down it. And I could, with my keychain, thermometer, and compass, I could stick that on as well. Then I just uh, threaded the strap back through the buckle, and she was fine. I'll show you what I got inside. First, this is just the uh, U.S. Army first aid pouch. Carry in there one of those Mylar survival blankets, silver survival blanket. You look after them, they don't tear up too much on you. Super lightweight and cheap, so I carry one of those. Then I have a polypropylene balaclava. Really quite thin, but I don't put it on really tight. I try to keep it as loose and, and um, wrinkled up as I can because all that makes ear pockets. And so that's a good little head warmer if I need it. And again, that's just a thermometer and a small mini compass as a backup compass. Now this can carry quite a bit of gear and still have space left over to put some extra stuff in. That's why I particularly like this bag. And it's small, if I'm going through thick bush, um, you know, the round shape, the smooth surface, the bush just brushes right past it. It doesn't get caught up on thorns or anything like that, so it's really quite nice. And as I said before, it's got a lot of space inside of here. You can put a lot of gear in there. So what I carry in there, this is my, uh, it's a bush survival kit. So this is my 10 C's of survival in here. So bank line, I think that's number 36 bank line. And carry some aspirins. Uh, just in case I go down, got some injuries, just some, uh, these are just Panadol, Paracetamol. Mostly if I don't have my coffee in the morning, <laughs> I need these because I'll get a headache. Spare battery for the torch. Survival bandana. Quite a good one. Easy to see, orange. Carry that. So, as you can see, particularly useful when out hunting as well. In here. Just my fire kit, a few extra pieces as well. Uh, I also got a magnifying lens. Fire kit, just a cigarette lighter, got duct tape wrapped around it, and I got duct tape securing the lighter in, um, in a locked position so it can't be, uh, the, the ignition button can't be depressed and let all that gas out. Got some matches in there, got a very small ferro rod which has a magnesium bar on it as well, uh, some very small SBIT uh, fire starters, piece of tin foil for putting on the ground to keep the moisture from the ground, trying to soak up into, into the fire, and uh, some inner tube and cotton balls. So that's the fire kit. It's my water bottle. Let's take a drink from it actually. It's a bit of a walk to get up here. 32 ounce now, Gene. Sorry, but I needed that. 32 ounce now, Jing.
Awesome bottle, really awesome bottle. Again, fits right in here. Still with some space as well. You can see how much uh, open space I've got left inside of there. And to go with an Nalgene, just a canteen cup. Won't explain all the individual uses I have it for, um, because I have got other videos where I show that sort of stuff. And here's my knife. 10 C's of survival, so this is the cutting. This is a Barco knife. It's called the Barco 2 uh, 444, or 2444, however you want to call it. And essentially, it's a Mora clipper, um, but at a very, very cheap price. Barco and Mora, from what I can tell, are the same company. I think Barco is the tool uh, side of the, of the company. And this is a Mora clipper, stainless steel blade. Awesome, awesome knife. And because it's not hasn't got the Mora name on it, it comes in at a much cheaper price too. Uh, I get these in the hardware stores in New Zealand for about $18, $18-$19. Find them at Mitre 10, Bunnings, that sort of stuff. Uh, cargo tape, I just have that on a, um, a ballpoint pen. Just broke off the ends of it or cut the ends of it off and ran the string through it and I have the tape wrapped around that so she just spins around. A whistle for communication and small lead lens of pen light. As you can see, what I'm carrying here is small lightweight stuff. I don't want to carry a ton of stuff that weighs a lot and is big and bulky trying to cover for every single eventuality. I want to get be able to get out there and enjoy my trip. And so traveling light and fast is how I do that. Carry two rubbish bags. Uh, Taro Movies, I've um, put a link into one of my previous movies before. He did a um, what you could do with four rubbish bags. Um, I've kind of modified, modified, <laughs> modified uh, his ideas for myself, and I've gotten down from four small rubbish bags to two large garden size sacks. Um, that's what I carry there. Um, that's a raincoat. I cut a hole in it for my head, another hole each for my arms, and then I slice this one up the side and pull it over like a poncho, and um, that way I'm completely covered for the rain. Doesn't give me a sleeping bag, but you know, I should, should be able to survive the night with these. Other items I have is just a tin foil cover for the cup. That would just go on like that when I'm brewing up water or um, just to keep it covered, stop uh, bits of trees and stuff and rubbish and uh, bugs and that from getting into my food or getting into my water. So that's what that's for. If I want to, I can put it on the ground and uh, light my fire on top, put my tinder on there and get it lit. Um, it's a barrier between the moisture and the ground and my fire. That slips just inside the canteen uh, cup, right next to the canteen. And then I have something else for water. Is a survival straw. I can get the thing in there. There it is. So just a survival straw. Got my water in there. Put that in there and just suck it on out. Um, that will. This one here will do uh, Giardia and Cryptosporidium, so uh, it'll filter it out. So it's a very, very good piece piece of equipment to have. So there you have it. That is my uh, hiking and hunting kit. It's also my bush survival kit. Thanks for tuning in.